I have fulfilled my lifetime dream of becoming a mermaid. <laughs> making a fabulous dress inspired by the Little Mermaid, obviously. <laughs> but it's not all fun and games in the water. I have to deal with predators, like sharks. And other mermaids. And Sebastian. She's sinking. I'm sinking rapidly. <laughs> My flamingo has a hole in it. Now, I know what you're thinking. But Sarah, what happened to your lovely mermaid hair? Just kidding. These are my sewing scissors. Now that I'm a mermaid, I'm filled with so much emotion. I just feel like... Just kidding. You don't want to hear me sing. <laughs> And I can still blow bubble rings. <laughs> now on to the sewing. One purple dress. Purple organza. Aerial lining. White spandex. One, two, three, four green organzas. Leaf trim or seaweed. Lots of pearls, and lots of rhinestones. Before I chop it up, this is the dress. This is definitely how I prefer to cut my fabric, under a dog. <laughs> Emmy, you're in the way. Much better. Definitely what I was going for. I mashed up Nikita's self-made princess corset and the Maya bra, which is linked below, to make a cupped corset pattern. I cut the pieces out of the purple skirt. The fashion fabric was a bit thin, so I fused some interfacing on it. I cut the pattern out for a third time from non-stretched denim. Pretend I ironed this before cutting. I wanted the denim to stiffen the linings, so I pinned them and basted them together. And bam! Corset lining! Time for that magic step again, but slower this time. I had a few tweaks to the pattern from the lining layer, so I adjusted it on the fashion layer. More mermaid magic! I finished the outside bodice for the time being, so I'm gonna go back to the lining. I only have synthetic whalebone, which is, you know, plastic. Generally, this would be done with some flat steel and spiral steel. I'm going to sew down all the seam allowance into boning channels. The boning is in. The next step is the cups. I need a wire. It was way cheaper to buy a bra than to actually just get the piece I needed. So this bra is sacrificial. Hand stitching montage. A lesson learned here. Sandwiching the cups in here with this made it really thick. So I, I think I will be doing that a different method next time, but I'm just gonna keep plowing ahead. Next, I'm going to carefully hand stitch uh, some of these seams, the cups and everything in place and hopefully keep the lining from showing too badly, but I am going to cover this up with organza, so it's not that important. And then after that, I'm going to actually trim the bones to the right length, fold this up and hand stitch it in here. I 
did the final bone trimming. That sounds wrong. Boning channel for the lacing. More hand stitching. Okay, so the last time that I put grommets in, this happened. So my mom got me a grommet press for my birthday. Yay, mom! And also, yay, Judah! Who needs instructions? My test went well, so on to the bodice. I don't know why I'm so very efficient at hurting myself, but I have an appropriate band-aid. I stabbed myself on the pin that was marking where the grommets go, so it wasn't actually anything to do with my new grommet press, which is working great. Now, see that big wrinkle? Boom! More mermaid magic. So I had to redo everything. There was this massive wrinkle and it was about two inches too big, which was a lot. So I took it apart, I closed this seam up half an inch on each side and put it back together again and it fits much better. Next is the tail. Just kidding, not this tail. <laughs> I was garage sailing this weekend and I found this, which is quite lovely. He made me an offer I couldn't refuse, so I got this sewing machine for $5. I don't know exactly what happened here, but I seem to have a lot of dogs. Alright, Judah. So I test dyed my dog. Hi, you are on my work again. I test dyed this ultra preen. Um, that's pretty green, and uh, it's a good color combination. My plan is to use my actual mermaid tail to sort of make a pattern on the ultra preen, I mean the dog bed, and cut it out that way. Uh, and then once I fit it properly, I'm going to dye it. Yes, this is exactly what I was picturing. I don't know what I was doing right that day, but Judah decided to nap with me instead of on the couch. I used my disappearing ink marker to trace the tail with seam allowance. Oh, and we're back to the usual dog now. Look at all the feet stepping on my crafting stuff. My sewing machine has a stretch stitch which looks like a lightning bolt, but a zigzag would work too. Excuse me, Judah. Now for the waistband. I used Kelly Green with a splash of blue. Get it? A splash? I did one more test to check the blue levels and dropped in the skirt. Mermaid magic! I have a chipmunk on my pattern drafter now. Thank you for letting me. Here's the pattern I drafted. It's a three-quarter circle skirt with a long train. I cut out some thick polyester green and hemmed it with six inch horsehair braid, or should I say seahorse hair. And then I grabbed my box of green fluff. I think I have a plan now. I cut out a circle of organza and hemmed it with fishing line in here. So I think I'm going to go, this is about eight inches, so I'm gonna go eight, 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 and then a couple of layers on top that are gonna go the whole way in the actual elliptical shape. Do you have a raffle problem, Emmy? I drew lots of donuts of various sizes on lots of different organza. I'm not really sure how I'm supposed to sew like this. It's my foot. <laughs> You're being a drama queen again. Emmy, don't be such a guppy. This 
is gonna take forever. I need a drink. I sewed fishing line into the double fold hem for extra ruffle poof. I have been debating making a variation of Cinderella's 2015 ball gown because it's so pretty, but uh, with having this much organza, I'm double thinking. Do I really want to do it? I'll get back to you on that. There has been a slight change of plans here because I was going to do a random layered color of organza thing, but uh, I think I'm going to switch to doing an ombre thing. I marked out a whole bunch of tick marks. There are just approximate lines about where I want the ruffles to end up. They're about an inch apart. See this top layer here? This stuff clogged my sewing machine with the tiny rhinestones that fell off. I will not be using that again. So much pinning! How much, you ask? I am out of pins. I have three layers left, so... <laughs> uh oh I found some old pins that did the job. Well, I was going for a ridiculous skirt. That's pretty ridiculous. <laughs> Sewing all that organza on was also pretty ridiculous. This is not good. There's two pieces that go on the top. This is half hemmed and this is not at all hemmed and I have no thread left and this is not how I planned on my day going. Yesterday, I didn't get any sewing done, but I did buy more thread. I also got to see a bald eagle diving for a fish in the lake and missing, which was pretty awesome. But unfortunately, I was alone in the middle of the lake with no camera, so there's no evidence. But I still got to see a bald eagle hunting. <laughs> it was so cool. I'm done hemming organza circles. Hooray! What do you guys think? Nothing? I pinned the top layer on. It's time to baste it, but oh my gosh, this is pretty. <laughs> More seaweed. So I tried to get this shot, but I had a really hard time getting all the ruffles out of the way. Like, a really hard time. Eventually I gave up. Eventually I gave up and changed the camera angle. I finished the rest of the skirt yesterday afternoon. Um, I really had wanted to do another layer of the seaweed on the top layer here, but I don't have enough. And then I bought the new Sims Cottage Living Expansion Pack, so that was the end of productivity yesterday. On to the organza seashells mock-up. I do have to warn you that the sleeves did not work out. This is mock-up number two, and I have one note on it saying I need to add two inches to the sleeve part so I can actually move my arm, but otherwise it's good and I'm gonna cut it out. Trying it on, and I'm gonna have to repin part of this because this is all the arm motion that I have. I like the rest of it though. To sew down the pleats, I did more hand stitching with two different sized pearl beads.
Yes, I am wearing Christmas pajama pants in the middle of summer. They're really comfy and they have flamingos on them. Changes have been made to the side thing. It was too poofy. When I scrapped the sleeve idea, I had to change some other stuff too, so, you know. Plan B. Lots of hand stitching. I kept the smaller pearl beads going around the rest of the organza. I used E6000 to glue down the teardrop pearls on the bottom edge as well as tiny pearls and purple rhinestones. I finished with the pearl and the purple crystals and I'm heating up my hotfix iron so I can do the hotfix blue and the hotfix, they're kind of peach and kind of purplish. Also, I'm in the sunshine. It's really hot out here now. <laughs> and this is the last video of this step because my camera died. Jumping ahead to the rhinestone results and adding the green hip fluffy thing. I don't know what to call it. I just did a big whip stitch to attach that. It was a bit windy at the beach, just a little bit, but look at my skirt blowing in the wind. It was so gorgeous up there. Now I know what you're thinking. Walking like a mermaid looks so graceful and glamorous. Very dignified. Ignore the feet. Mermaids don't have feet. Remember how windy I said it was? It was. Yep, still windy. But look at those skirt ruffles again. To the surprise of no one, I was mobbed by little girls who wanted a picture with Ariel. And they also screamed when I walked into the water, but it was waterproof. Done! Thank <laughs> you.